Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Lucy. Just saw you jump on there. Thank you for sharing this, Wendy. Um, massively appreciate that. Thank you, Dawn, for sharing this. Get it shared on uh, on Facebook, guys. You lot watching on Facebook will be massively appreciated. Um, Carly's here. Hi, Ross. Glad you are well, and I'm so jet-lagged. Carly, where have you been? If you're jet-lagged, Alex has just joined us as well. Um, say John's here on Facebook as well. Um, yeah, good evening, guys. This is what I should have done on tonight's broadcast like two weeks ago. I completely forgot normally for those who are just joining for the first time or you're listening on the audio experience or you're watching on the replay on YouTube or on AtsOnThis.tv. Normally, first Monday of the month, I don't kind of go like via a script or a slide deck like normal. I don't do any kind of presentation. We just do an open mic Q&A where literally anybody can say whatever they want, ask any questions they want on the industry, acting, voiceover, social media, marketing, mindset, positive psychology, anything like that. Carly's in Canada. I didn't know you were in Canada, Carly. No way. Well, I hope you're enjoying yourself in Canada. What time is it in Canada? Let us know. Rich is here from Miami. We've got Canada in the house, Miami in the house. We definitely have people joining from Europe sometimes. We're going We're going totally global. So tonight, is that indeed, guys? Open mic Q&A. Got any questions on anything to do with the industry? Anything to do just with anything, you know? You might have seen things that I'm up to on my vlog, voiceover you might want to know about vlogging you know how you can kind of up your profile via that vlogging honestly seriously has been like one of the best things that i have done for building my personal brand i thought it was gonna be but it's like it's way better than i ever imagined it was gonna be i just think everybody should get get cracking on a vlog uh we got wendy in london she's in wednesday uh, in london and carly Lend landed at 403 p.m yesterday in canada wow so a bit of jet like that oh and look at this tony ross is just joined from chicago we're going truly global now and um, give us a retweet guys if you wouldn't mind give it a share on facebook um and just yeah bring people to the party so tonight like i say anything goes i've got a few things here that i want to talk about particularly the first thing i want to talk about and just bring up um, because I've seen this affecting a few people recently. You know when I launched Bulletproof Actor, like the free videos that I give out before I launch registration for the course, that, that's now closed now, unfortunately. So anyone who didn't get in, can't get in now until 2019, but still get on the early bird list if you want to join the program in 2019, go to bulletproofactor.com. I asked people in those three videos that I launch like as a little freebie before the registration to tell me what the things are that they think are limiting them in themselves in their lives, why they're not furthering their career, the limiting beliefs that they may, they may have. Bobby, good evening. Totally Reels is here as well. Good evening. Um, and people, like I think 228 actors or something left comments this time around. And there were so many of the same themes cropping up in those limiting beliefs. And I've started seeing... Well, a pattern, I see it every time I launch those videos. But particularly at this time of year as well, when, what was last night? BAFTAs, yeah? What's going to be in early March? Oscars, yeah? And this is the time of year, and I've seen conversations already happening within Bulletproof Actor, where actors just in general, like, find this time of year where everybody's getting awards and being told they're amazing and they're on red carpets and they're seeing all this glitz and glamour or the sizzle to the steak, so to speak. So the steak itself is the main meal, your job, your career, the progress you make in it. The sizzle is, like, all the glitz and glamour on top of it. And they're seeing people on these red carpets winning awards last night for BAFTAs, being nominated for Oscars and all this stuff, and they're feeling like shit about themselves if they aren't there. And I was talking about this on my vlog today. And I've got some stats here that I think are really interesting, right? First of all, life expectancy, and this is really conservative, okay? Life expectancy of a human being on the planet today, super conservative, is 75 years old. Right? I think loads of us are going to be living a lot longer than 75 years old. Give me some hearts if you're getting over 75, because I'm definitely getting over 75, God willing. Give me some, uh, some comments on Facebook if you're going to live to over 75, right? That equates to 75, right? Just over 27,000 days. 27,000 days. A shitload of days, right? So what we're doing is we're seeing actors who have 27,000 days in their life look at one day in their life, i.e. a BAFTA ceremony or an Oscar ceremony. Wendy's getting at least till 90, definitely. Um, and, they're, and they're basically going, right, <laughs> this one day where I'm seeing other people have success, I'm going to allow it to take away my self-worth and my significance for the other 27 odd thousand days in my life. And also what people are forgetting is people, you know, who vote for... Who's this living? Alex wants to get well into the hundreds. I mean, that's amazing. People who vote for people to win a BAFTA or win an Oscar or, you know, qualify for that kind of consideration. It's roughly that, well, it's about six and a half to seven thousand people in each instance. There's about six and a half thousand BAFTA members who qualify to vote, and there's seven thousand Oscar people who get to vote in the Oscars. 
as a percentage of the population of the world, right, which is 7.5 billion people, I've got the number in front of me here. Basically, if you're wrapping up your entire self-worth and self-esteem and significance and whether you feel happy or not, because 7,000 people on the planet are not giving you accolades and little awards for being great at summit, you're effectively letting naught point, listen at this, naught, 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 that's six noughts, naught point, six noughts, nine, three recurring. That is less than naught point, naught, 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 one percent of the population fuck you up. Right, and it's just it's absolutely ridiculous that people are, you know, actors and stuff are vying for the approval and appraisal and applause from like these few people on the planet, rather than getting freaking creative, because that in itself is so fulfilling. Just being creative, whether that's writing something, filming something, recording something, audio wise, directing something, putting something on in a theater, they're stopping from doing that. Because they're focusing on this pinnacle, this like one thing, if I get that, I'll be happy. And I promise you, because I know people who have won these awards, that it don't work like that. Like seriously, you wake up the next day once you've got a BAFTA and you still have all the problems you had yesterday. You've got a few people who want to speak to you and give you interviews, but that lasts for about three months or so. Um, and then all that fizzle dies off. And then basically they're focusing on who's going to be the person next year who wins that award. So I just wanted to kind of give people a little jolt of self-awareness to go quit focusing on dumb stuff. Like, you have 27,000 days in your life, plus if you're going to live over 75 years old. But it's just kind of like, you know, don't let one or two, you know... Well, ultimately, it would be if you looked at this once a year as a ceremony and you took in something like the BAFTAs and the Oscars, so that's two times a year. Two days a year, and you live 75 years. So that's 150 days out of your 27,000 plus. Screw you up. It's just a bit nonsense, isn't it? Um, just doesn't matter, you know. Just I would focus more on impacting more than seven to eight thousand people in your life, which is way easier to do than you think. By just turning up every day, doing good work, and putting good stuff out there, whether you get a statue for it or not. So I just wanted to basically, yeah, uh, put that out there. I don't know if you find it useful, but it gave me some kind of awareness today to go, wow, there's like that's such a tiny, tiny percentage of people that we're trying to kind of impress and please, and we're basing a lot of our self worth on. So. If you like that, let me know. Hit me up with a tweet. Let me know what you think. If you're listening on the audio experience, at Ross A. Grant. What's Tony saying here? Hi, Ross and friends. I'm looking to start a podcast and I'm starting from scratch. Specifically, would love some help with editing tips and uploading to a hosting site. Okay. Let me tell you about podcasting, something I know a lot about. Anyone else thinking of starting a podcast up in any area of their life? Doesn't have to be anything to do with acting. You might be a car enthusiast or whatever. Um, you might have all the hobbies on the side. I think a podcast is such a good idea. And the reason that people will be listening to this audio now, you, you guys are watching me live. There are, there are probably going to be 2,000 people this week who just listen to this audio. And the reason audio is so big is because we can do things whilst listening to audio. So it's not sitting down and necessarily watching a video that's going to consume us completely. We're going to sit down and listen to something or, or listen to something on the train or walk the dog whilst listening to something or work out whilst listening to something. And audio is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger because, I'm not sure if you've been aware, but Amazon Alexa, Google Home, Apple HomePod, um, Facebook are going to do two HomePods as well this year. Uh, you know, you say, hey, Alexa, what's my schedule for today? She goes, hey, Ross, the, your schedule is blah, blah, blah. And you go, Alexa, make the lights blue. And she can turn your lights blue and stuff if you've got um, Philips Hue, which is a, uh, a connected light bulb, effectively. Um, audio is becoming massive. We're going to do more and more and more with audio where we're going to end up like searching via Google way more via audio as well. You know, I think something like one in four... Google searches on mobile, not on desktop, on mobile is done via, hey Siri or hey Google. You know, we're actually speaking to it. Audio is going to come more and more. So if you're doing a podcast, it's really, really worthwhile thing to do. So Tony, when you're first starting out, what I would use, if you can afford it, what I edit all my podcasts on, and it's so, so quick and easy and a brilliant piece of software, it's something called Adobe Audition. Now, you lease Adobe Audition from Adobe, the software people, for about, in the UK, I think it works out about £16 a month. Um, I don't think you can buy it outright. And if you're a student, you get it cheaper. But you lease it and you can get it for Mac or PC. And it's the simplest editing software on the market. It was so, so effective at editing, editing audio and recording audio very, very quickly. So I would use Adobe Audition if you can afford it. There are free alternatives out there like Audacity, which is completely free. Good evening, Gary. Hope you're well, mate. Um, so you could use Audacity or Audition, whatever up to you. Or you could even use GarageBand if you've got a Mac. That comes free on Mac. Um, you could use that. And then what you do, when you've, once you've recorded your podcast... 
to get it up on iTunes or to get it up on Stitcher.com, you know, or the main places like that where you would put your podcast out, you have to ha- have it hosted somewhere, effectively online, and you link what's called your RSS feed to the podcast service, and then the podcast service automatically brings in your feed. So every time you upload a podcast to that feed, it's brought into iTunes automatically. It's very easy to do. Don't be like put off by this. It's a very simple process. I use something called Libsyn. Libsyn, and it's L-I-B-S-Y-N, Liberated Syndication, I think it's called. It is a premium service that I pay for, and you pay depending on how much audio you're uploading each month. But I first started off hosting my podcast on SoundCloud, which was free. So you can host your podcast on SoundCloud, depending on, again on how much like audio file size you know you're uploading. You might have to pay nine dollars a month for SoundCloud if you exceed a certain amount. Um, but I hosted it on SoundCloud for a long time until I started getting too many downloads really to continue hosting it on SoundCloud. If I was going back and starting again from scratch and I had a bit of money, you know, not not a lot but just a little bit, I would go straight in for Libsyn. Um, and I would I would begin there rather than going SoundCloud and then porting it all over it. That can get a little bit complicated. So I would use Audacity or Audition to edit Tony or GarageBand, and I would host it on Libsyn. Okay, just just Google Libsyn, um, and you will uh, and you'll find it there. Let me just get the spelling for Libsyn. If it is, I'm still think it's L I B. Let me just make sure it's not L Y B. Yeah, L I B S Y N Libsyn. Um, so yeah go and uh, check that out do a bit of research but very easy everybody should start a podcast seriously it's a great way to get attention from people so that's that hopefully answered in a little bit of giving you some some info to go on there uh tony hopefully that helps um let's have a look john what's john asking now how can i get an agent with no money well john agents shouldn't charge you any money never ever sign with an acting agent that charges you money to sign with them. They're plastic bullshit agents who have zero interest really in getting you work because they're all earning money from the subscriptions they're getting from people to join the agency. So where is their incentive to actually get you work? You know, they get they get paid via commission normally. So there's a big incentive there for you to, you know, the agent to get you to audition. So you get the jobs, you earn the money and they earn the commission. If you're signing with an agent who who is charging you, um, Quit it right now, mate. It's bullshit. Honestly, yeah. You don't want to be... No no decent agent on the planet charges people. And you will get extras agencies and modeling agencies who are like, hey, sign up, £150, and you have to have a portfolio done with us and our preferred photographer. That's, again, just nonsense. They're just marketing a package of photographs and basically promising you stuff they'll never give you. Like, oh, we'll get you jobs. No, you won't. You basically want 150 quid because you've got this hookup with this photographer, and between you, you get like 75 quid each or whatever, he'll take the pictures, you get 75 quid sign-up fee, you end up with a 1,000 people on your database every year paying you 150 quid, you know, and then you're making 150,000 pounds a year, and you don't really have to do anything for the money. Big, big, like, snake oil thing. Don't don't go in for that. Alex said she got stung that way. Yeah, honestly, nonsense. So I would say, don't worry about not having any money, mate. Your talent is the currency you use to get with an agent. If you're talented enough and your work is good enough, no agent on the planet is going to ask you for cash to join. Uh, what else have we got here? Eric James Dean in the house. All right, Eric. Hope you're good, mate. Good to uh, see you here. Um, oh, John was saying as well, Albert, uh, Albleton or Ableton is a, another piece of software. A-B-L-E-T-O-N. I've heard of that. Never used it, but for editing audio, hopefully that's uh, that's another option, Tony, as well. But if you've got GarageBand, Tony, I'd use that as a free one if you can't afford uh, audition. Wayne, good evening. Just joined us on uh, on Twitter and Periscope. Um, so another thing I want to talk about, first of all, uh, well, second of all, um, is showreel surgery this Wednesday, 21st. So in two days time, it's what's called showreel share day, sorry, showreel share day, which is a day where people on Twitter basically upload their showreel to Twitter and then everybody retweets everybody's showreel like for the entire day and your showreel can end up with hundreds of retweets, could get in front of anybody I certainly don't think it's a day where you you know you go oh my showreel's definitely going to get discovered this day because I don't think that's probably happened as of yet. I don't think people at the biggest agencies in the country like Curtis Brown, Independent, and United, um, and Troika, and you know the big agencies are really sat there having time to look through hundreds of showreels. But you never know on the off chance who might end up seeing your showreel. So I still think it's a really worthwhile thing to do, and also it's a great thing to do if you just want to watch other actors' showreels, get an idea of how you can maybe tweak your own showreel, get tips for the layout of showreels, the order, 
you know, and, uh, and network with other actors. I think that's the thing where it, it gives value. You know, you get to see and, and uh, you know, hear of a lot more actors um, who you might want to work with, might want to collaborate with, you know, might want to get creative with. Um, and me and Chris Stone, probably the UK's best showreel producer, um, are going to do a live broadcast 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. So four full hours on Wednesday from 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. UK time. And what we're going to do in that time, talk about showreels, but we're also going to broadcast live a ton of your show reels. Okay, so we're going to broadcast them out to all our followers. So on Facebook, I've got a couple of thousand. On Twitter, I've got 17,000. Chris has got 54,000 on Twitter. So between us, we can get your reels out potentially to nearly 80,000 people. Okay, between us, plus all the retweets that people are going to do. If you want us to feature your show reel, all you've got to do is you've got to tweet it to me and Chris at Act on This TV at Chris Stone Films, okay, just so we get it, and just tweet us a link to either YouTube or Vimeo. That's the only platform that we can rip the, the, the show reel from. So YouTube or Vimeo, nothing else, unfortunately. Don't put it in a tweet and tweet at me. I can't rip that. But send me a tweet to YouTube or Vimeo with your show reel. And what we're going to do, we're going to choose as many as we can. We're just going to broadcast them out for those four hours on Wednesday, 4 p.m., till 8 p.m. Wednesday evening. And that's going to happen over on the Facebook page, which is facebook.com while you're watching now, if you're watching live, facebook.com forward slash act on this TV or twitter.com forward slash act on this TV. So uh, let us know if you, if you want to get involved with that. It's normally a good laugh. We get Chris here. He gives tips out about showreels. We play just loads of showreels, basically. Um, we normally have a really good time doing that. And we're just doing, we did eight hours last year, which was a bit too much. But we're just doing four hours for, uh, for this time, which I think is a little bit, little bit more manageable. Which is good. Petch is here. Lee Petcher. Petch, my vlog cameraman, is in the house. All right, Petch. Hope you're good, mate. Um, John said, so great last year what you did with uh, what they did with them. Um, it's funny, isn't it, John? It's good. We have a good laugh on uh, Showreel Share Day. So, yeah, definitely uh, get your reel over to us at Acts on This TV, at Ross A. Grant. And Dawn says she's definitely going to be watching. Um, another little factoid that I, uh, I read about before that I wanted to, again, I just want to hammer this home, right? Because, you know, like for months I've been saying, you know, online video, online content. George King is here, all right, George. It's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger business in this industry, okay? Broadcasters like ITV, BBC, Channel 4, you know, are cacking their pants to a certain degree because we no longer, as creatives, require big broadcasters to broadcast our stuff. The, the rise of Netflix... Amazon Prime, you know, Hulu, you know, all kinds of online streaming services are really like having a massive impact. You know, people are paying their seven ninety nine a month for Netflix and they're not watching TV anymore. So what you're finding now is collaborations between TV companies and Netflix and TV companies and Amazon. And there will be dual, you know, dual uh, kind of broadcast on TV and exclusively to one of those services. Just notice a fact here before Facebook, right? In America, Tony, you all have this. Carly in Canada, they'll have this as well, I think. Facebook are launching something called Facebook Watch, okay? And it's already available in America. It's not out here in the UK. But these are pages like a like page, so like your Facebook like page that you've got where you go, please, guys, come and like my page. We're soon going to have access to Facebook Watch pages. And these are pages very much like your like page, but they're geared up for video. So anyone here, my vlog is already on a page similar to a, a watch page. If you go to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross, you'll see my weekly vlog on there. The minute watch pages are available, I'm going to hopefully port that over to a watch page. Facebook have announced today, check this out, right? Or I don't know if it's today, it might have been over the weekend, that they are willing to pay, okay? This is how big business online exclusive video is, right? Very similar to Amazon Prime and Netflix. Facebook are willing to pay up to $3 million per 30-minute episode for Facebook Watch. That's the equivalent of $2.1 million per 30-minute episode. That is massive, massive, massive budget. I mean, they're not going to pay me two million dollars for an episode of my vlog i'm talking about production companies who are making tv quality stuff but this is just how big business is getting online carly says wow for these companies which for us guys guess what it means there's going to be a shit ton more work available for actors you know for amazon exclusives netflix exclusives and soon to be Facebook Watch exclusives. Daniel Edwards, casting director in the UK, good friend of mine. He just uh, he cast. He was the casting director on something called The Innocence, which is an awesome Netflix exclusive that comes out very very soon. They've just started dropping the, the trailers for that. It was massive budget. 
could potentially go for six series and it will change the lives of those kids. It's young kids in it, like 16, 17 years old. It's going to change the lives forever of those children that are, you know, are young adults that are, that are in that show. Um, so don't let anybody tell you, like, you know, that kind of like the future is necessarily TV. TV is, is right now is dying, like exactly like, you know, radio was back in the day. Radio is making a bit of a, a resurgence because of, um, like I say, people can listen and do things at the same time and audio is becoming bigger and bigger. Um, but it's interesting how online streaming services are really threatening normal TV, you know, normal broadcasters. So I thought that was just a, a little interesting nuggets. If you've got an amazing idea for a show that gets commissioned at some point exclusively by Facebook, the budget for that somewhere, like I say, in the region of $3 million per 30-minute episode, which is mental. Um, Gary says, can you add your vlog to the act on this page? I couldn't find a link earlier. Um, yeah, I can do, Gary. I normally I put it in the, fa- in the Facebook group, the acts on this group, um, but I will post it on the actual page as well. But if you go to, this just applies to everybody, would love it if you did this for me. If you go to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross and just hit the um, the little like, you know, turn on notifications and subscribe to the page. Every time I create a post and every Monday a brand new episode of my vlog comes out, you will see that notification. It'll say Ross has just uploaded a video. You're going to see on these vlogs, I think they are pretty interesting, all like the behind the scenes of everything that I do. Sometimes we do daft stuff and funny stuff if we're just mucking around, but you will see behind the scenes of my acting career, my voiceover career. I'm currently talking to the BBC about numerous documentaries to do this year. Um, You'll see me voicing documentaries. I think this Thursday night, a Channel 4 documentary I voiced called World's Wildest Flights comes out at 9pm, I think. Uh, But you would have seen, if you go back on my vlog, me actually going in the studio with the director there and voicing that documentary. We asked the the, the director questions on voiceover. You'll see me at a a, um, studio a lot at the moment voicing a brand new CBeebies animation that I'm doing that they reckon is going to be like the next big thing for kids. You'll get to see all of that, facebook.com forward slash watch Ross. Uh, I just hope it inspires people. The idea was, is to show people that everything I talk about on these broadcasts, that I'm not a bullshitter, that it's like, you know what, all this stuff that I'm saying about positive psychology and mindfulness, um, you know, and the science of success, I'm implementing into my own life and you'll get to see what works and what doesn't. And, you know, we we just document what's going on. We don't create stuff for it. So you'll see the good, bad and uh, the ugly and, you know, everything in between. But yeah, Gary, if you're struggling to find it, mate, go and turn on notifications on the page, facebook.com forward slash watch Ross. Um, and you'll uh, you'll never miss anything, dude. Um, let's have a look. Tony says, have uh, I heard about Facebook pages becoming less valuable? I heard a coach talking about this, but forgive me if that's not the case. Depends what you're doing with it, Tony. Ultimately, you know, Facebook is just one tiny little part of gaining attention for you and your brand, all right? And people get, get scared by the word brand and they're like, oh, it's so wanky. Why, oh, personal brand, what's that? Pers- call it what you want, right? Your brand ultimately is just your reputation, mate. If you, if you feel better by replacing the word brand with the word reputation, it's exactly the same thing, okay? And these days, you can't go all in on one platform. So if your main platform, say, for instance, you know, was Snapchat, right? You're like, I'm getting all these followers on Snapchat and a huge following, loads of attention on Snapchat. And then suddenly, Instagram come along and they in, in, introduce Instagram stories, which basically was what Snapchat used to be. It's all Snapchat was, these little 15-second videos. Instagram implement that into their own product and then suddenly everyone just goes, oh, I don't need Snapchat anymore. If you'd have gone all in on Snapchat, you'd have just lost your audience practically overnight. Equally, if you go all in on Facebook and you're like, right, I'm going to distribute my showreel and all my content and my online vlog and my web series primarily on Facebook and nowhere else. What happens, you know, when YouTube come along, you know, or a brand new service comes along and goes, right, we've got this. And then everyone goes, oh, right, not bothered about Facebook anymore. Facebook is now, and because of Mark Zuckerberg, the way he's changing the algorithm on Facebook right now, he's trying to make Facebook more personal. So you don't see all these adverts for stuff anymore. You go back to what we used to use Facebook for, which for me was like organizing nights out, parties, etc., catching up with old friends, posting photos of school pics and stuff like that, you know, reminiscing about the good old days. That's what Mark wants it to be because it's come a bit of a playground of all these 30-second videos of people being stupid. Um, you know, so he's trying to get rid of all that. So that means all the people who have built a business on that suddenly go, oh, well, I'm kind of screwed now because they haven't built elsewhere. So for me, writing blogs, filming vlogs, you know, creating other content on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Snapchat, on Instagram. I don't use Snapchat really in the UK because it's not that big in my niche. Um, but I think you can, you know, you should spread it far and wide, mate, because you've got all bases covered there. If you can do it all, 
do it all. If you're like, you know what, I'm so much better at writing and I don't like being in front of a camera, which is not the case for a lot of people on here because you're all actors, then go all in on the writing, but don't just do it on one platform. Medium is a great platform. It's called Medium. Go and get a blog on Medium if you just like blogging. It's a massive platform that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger for gaining attention. If one of your posts goes viral on Medium, um, you've got a lot of attention. Um, so yeah, whether Facebook pages are becoming less, you know, more or less valuable, I just, I just think anyone who, you know, classes them as like all or nothing, don't really know what they're talking about, mate. So, um, so yeah, use it, have one, but don't just have that, you know, go, go, uh, elsewhere, you know, to, to, to trade your attention. Ultimately, that's what we're doing. If you want to, uh, if you want to be seen and have success, you need people's attention. That's just the way the world works. So, um, don't just go all in on one platform, spread the seed. Um, let's have a look. So sorry, you didn't get pancakes on your vlog. Ruth has watched my vlog. We did a, <laughs> we did such a good search for pancakes, Ruth. I was in Media City after I did that voiceover. I could not find pancakes anywhere. Everywhere I said, no, nope, we've finished serving them now, mate. Ended up getting a substitute for pancakes that I won't tell you what it was because I want you to go over to youtube.com forward slash watch Ross or facebook.com forward slash watch Ross and watch the episode. Amy, how are we doing? Amy's here. Hey Ross, so I'm currently in a new comedy pilot called LAPD. It's got a couple of names in it. Just wanted to ask, do you know how to apply to send to Netflix or what we should do next? Do you know that, Amy? I don't know the the protocol around Netflix. Basically, Netflix isn't... You know what? They do have like a central studios in terms of like they make their own stuff. But a lot of stuff Netflix hosts is made by other production companies. Um, so it's not like, oh, okay, you know, and same for Amazon Prime. It's not like, you know, they um, just make their own stuff. They do make their own internal projects that are exclusive to those platforms. Um, but I'm not quite sure, yeah, what the protocol would be. I mean, have a, dead simple, get on Netflix.com, you know, have a look at what they, uh, in the support section, see if you can find any kind of email um, that's at least going to provide you with another email. You know, you send it to like a general support thing and they might go, you know what, for submissions and commissions for Netflix, you need to be looking at this department. Here's their email address and just keep going from there. If you probably Google, you know, Netflix commissions or Netflix commissioning department, Amazon Prime commissioning department, um, you about to find some information on there. Um, and it would be the same process as approaching any other production company. They're going to want a treatment, um, which will comprise of either finished scripts or, you know, outlines of episodes, character breakdowns, um, locations. Uh, I mean, sometimes, you know what, you can you can go with just a very, you know, a very short one page treatment and go, would you be interested in hearing more about this? Thus, you're not, you know, whacking everything in. But if you already film stuff, um, get a, you know, a five minute little trailer or whatever over to people and just go, this is what we're doing. Would you be interested in seeing more? It's awesome that you're doing that, though. It's really, really good. And definitely use the names that are involved in it dine out on that get them to get involved in the promotion of it as well uh tony says okay silly question i want my sunday videos to be viewed on youtube and other places for people who aren't friends with me they're basic nothing fancy are other things i could do any other things i could do other than a basic youtube upload um yeah absolutely sony so what you'll see is yeah so okay so with video this is the thing right there's multiple platforms for video guys and you need to remember that people watching each platform go there for a different reason so right now people on instagram go there to watch well up to one minute videos you can only upload a 60 second clip to instagram okay so what you want to do for your videos tony is you go okay well for instagram i'm actually going to edit the, the best 60 seconds that i can I'm going to put it in a video with a caption and I'm going to link in my bio on Instagram to the main thing. Exactly. Look at this. This is, this is what I do for my vlog. Okay. So here's an Instagram video for my latest episode of my vlog. Check this out. And I've actually like allocated a haircut to each number on the dice. I'm going to roll the dice and you have to go and get that haircut. We want some Baba Boom, Vidal Sassoon, <laughs> Theresa May. Short and edgy with cool undershaves, AKA, I call it the Bono. Bing! We're in a very rainy media city, I'm here for a meeting with Steve about this BBC Horizon documentary, and it's also pancake day. Will me and Petch get any? Wait and see. Right, so we've got to hairdresser number three, which is Way Camper. It's called Hair Bank, and it looks like it is for women. It'd be right up his street, but is closed. We're on the hunt for anywhere that's doing pancakes on pancake day. Do you guys do any? We were. We're not you were. Right, this could not have turned out better. Basically what's happened is we've ended up commandeering a salon. This is now the Watch Ross salon. 
Right, so that's a 60 second like trailer for my vlog, right? So I can only upload that 60 seconds to Instagram because that's all it will let me upload, okay? So I've got that for there. Now that works quite well on Facebook as well because people are used to short form video on Facebook, okay? And just seeing these little, you know, one minute, two minute little comedy videos or like, you know, inspirational videos, etc. So that works as well. And within the description, if I was uploading that to Facebook, I would have a link to the full episode over on YouTube, okay? YouTube, obviously, you want the full thing because people go to YouTube to watch long form video. When you go to YouTube, you know you're going to watch videos that are lengthy. You know, there might be vlogs that are 20 minutes, 25, 30 minutes long. They're not these two second little things that you see, you know, on, uh, on, on the other social media platforms. Instagram, 60 seconds, two minutes and 19 seconds on Twitter. Um, and whatever you want on Facebook. Well, people don't generally. What I'm finding, I upload my full episode to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross. doesn't get a load of traction on there. Most of my views come from YouTube because people go to YouTube to watch long form video. So with your videos on a Sunday, Tony, rather than just uploading the full thing to YouTube, do that so it's on YouTube. People can catch up. I would also rip the audio like I do. I take the audio from all of my videos, this audio right now, over 2,000 people will be listening to this tomorrow plus um, when I rip the audio from this and I put it out on iTunes and Stitcher. Okay, They download this audio as a podcast. So do that. So get your video up on YouTube, rip the audio from it, put it out as a podcast, repurpose 60 seconds of that video for Instagram. And if you want, if you wanted to cut a bit longer, create another one that's two, up to 2 minutes and 19, 2 minutes and 20 seconds for Twitter. So you're covering all bases and you're catering for each audience and their attention span on each platform. Yes, it's loads of work, but you're only working with one video a week. So it's fine, you know, and you will find that you, um, you know, you end up with way more views if you're putting teasers and trailers out all over the place with a link to the full thing. So that's what I would, that would be my advice. That's what I'm doing and it's working. It's what I see a lot of, you know, a lot of the big boys doing as well. Um, and then what you can do as well when you've got enough videos, mate, do a mashup. Go, right, I'm going to get a 60 second mashup now of like, you know, four inspiring things I've said during my video. If you want overlay other stock footage, you know, of not just of you, but of other things, um, you know, over the top of that video to give it more impact, add some music underneath it, loads of things you can do if you can get creative and then you're repurposing that content. So basically that one broadcast isn't going to waste. You're like getting six pieces of content out of one broadcast that you do. My advice there, um, let's have a look. Uh, Sharon says there's a new social media app called Perf, Per Perfy. Don't know what that is, Sharon. I'll check it out. Literally no idea. But this is going to happen as well, guys. Over over time, we will be introduced to new platforms. Nine out of ten will fall by the wayside. One will stick, though, and it will become a big thing. And my advice and what I will do is I'll try and get in there early to get some kind of status on that platform before it gets saturated. Because I've never been into a platform in the early days. I wish I'd got into YouTube in like, uh, you know, 2006, I think, was when it, people first started putting videos up. Um, I was kind of late to the game on Twitter as well. I've been late to the game on everything. <laughs> I don't want us to happen again. I got really early in the game on Periscope, though, which is good. Um, Gary, let's have a look. Uh, Gary says, get to know production companies of similar shows. That's advice for Amy, I think. Uh, quite a few Netflix people are on LinkedIn. Good one, Gary. But I haven't been in touch with anyone yet, so don't know what they're like. Yeah, LinkedIn's a great one to find out information if you want to find out stuff from people straight from the horse's mouth. Get on LinkedIn, search for the word Netflix, see who works there. Try and find out anybody who works in the commissioning department particularly. Reach out to them, you know, get the info from the horse's mouth. Um, definitely. There's a company called Distriber who have connections to all major platforms. They will help you get distribution. Very interesting company. Distriber. D-I-S-T-R-I-B-B-E-R, -E says Rich. Um, so yeah, check that out as well. Um, all right, Catherine. Catherine's here as well. Good evening. Hope you're well. This content is very helpful, says uh, says Tony. How do you rip audio? Okay, so if you've got a Mac, Tony, which I think you have, you've got an, got an iMac or whatever, you've got a MacBook, open up a video. So if you're doing these, these Facebook Live videos, dead simple, right? Go to Facebook, click on the three dots in the top right-hand corner, and it will allow you to download your video, okay? If this is going out on Facebook right now, after this is finished, I can download the video. So you've got the video. Then if you just double-click that video, it will open up in QuickTime on your Mac, okay? Go to um, the file. Let me see exactly what this is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually, uh, actually do this now. I'm just going to double-click this. Yeah, click on QuickTime, top left-hand corner. No, 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 click on File, sorry. Uh, and then click, and then if you scroll down a little bit on the drop-down menu, it says Export, and you can export audio only. 
and that's just going to rip the audio for you. Or what you can do if you've got Audition, Adobe Audition, is just drag the video directly in and it will rip the audio for you and you can edit it as a podcast. But if you want to rip the audio and have it as an MP3 file on your laptop, um, yeah, open your video file in QuickTime, which comes on every Mac. Click on File, Export, Audio Only. Job done. You've got the audio. Uh, Hootsuite is a good application to manage social media, says John. It is if you want to schedule social media. It's, uh, it's very valuable. Um, definitely. I use a piece of software. The best piece of software I've ever found for scheduling uh, Twitter um, and Facebook posts is called Meet Edgar. And it's a crazy name. Meet, M-E-E-T, Edgar, E-D-G-A-R. It's what I use to schedule all my social media posts. So you'll see the act on this. Twitter feed fill up with posts every two hours, I think. Um, On a daily basis, probably three of them will be me live. The rest will be populated from the most popular content from actsonthis.tv via Meet Edgar. It picks my most popular content for me. I write a post of what I want it to say. And you might see, you might have noticed, you know, you could say, oh, I've seen Acts on This tweet about this before. Um, That's because you have. Um, you know, you have seen that because it's picked it out. But when the thing with on Twitter, when you tweet something, you might have 17,000 followers, but when you tweet it, maybe what, I don't know, 200 of those are going to be online and see it. And if the other 16,800 aren't online, they're not going to see it. So it's worth tweeting about the same thing loads of times, just not the same thing every consecutive tweet. Make sure you're, uh, you know, you're tweeting about other stuff in between, but you know, you, um, you don't want to think, oh, I'm going to be mithering people because they might have seen this. Yeah, you know what? A few people might have seen it. Loads more won't have seen it. Uh, Tony says, I believe I owe you $200 for this coaching session. <laughs> it's free, Tony. It's free, mate, honestly. Keep keep your dollars. Um, no, this is what, like, this is just what uh, what people should be doing. Like, seriously, I genuinely, I don't think people believe me when I say I want everybody to win. If you don't want everyone to win, you're a loser, like you will lose seriously if you do if you want everybody to win you become invincible because you can't beat somebody who wants you to win you getting yours tony and getting a top podcast mate doesn't stop me getting mine and getting a top podcast anyone in here getting a job doesn't stop me getting a job you know it might stop me getting that job if we go for the same job but it's going to be a shed load more if I work for them. Jenna, good evening. Jenna's here. Jenna Murphy's in the house. How are you? Hope you uh, you are well. Tony says, I'm also looking for sponsors for my podcast. Nothing crazy, just enough to break even with uploading host costs. Uh, if that's on this or Master of Monaco would like to, I'd be honoured. Let us know, Tony. I don't know what... Um, I've never I've never sponsored a podcast before, to be honest. But um, yeah, sponsorship's a, 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 re- a, a real way to go with podcasting. People are like, how do you make money out of podcasts? If you put a good podcast out, um, that gets enough hits, then of course people are going to want a shout out at the beginning of that and they're going to pay you, you know, anywhere from, you know, I don't know, £30 or $30 or whatever, right up to the podcast like School of Greatness, like Lewis Howe's podcast, it gets 2 million downloads a month. I dread to think what that's worth, but it's got to be in the region, I don't know, it's got to be like 10 grand plus an episode, surely to God. That's how you make your uh, your money on podcasts. If you're putting one of those a week out, suddenly it becomes a very, very viable business. Uh, I'm just going to block this user on here. He's just popped up on uh, on Twitter. You get some real weird freaks on here, don't you? Um, so, yeah, hopefully uh, they've gone. Um, so, yeah, podcasting. Honestly, seriously, everybody should get in it. If I had more time, I would go harder on a podcast. It's something I'm definitely looking at, you know, pursuing further in the future. I've just got quite a lot of, you know, uh, irons in the fire um, and just I'm maxing out on time. The thing for me this year... He's definitely building more of a team around me. I've got like two people in the team now, and myself, so that's three. I want to get to the point where I like literally got like 20, um, and then we can just put out content after content after content after content. Um, anybody else? I feel I've neglected everybody on Periscope because I've been reading Facebook so much. Anyone on Periscope or Twitter got any questions they want to ask about anything, acting, social media? Do you know what? Here's a little story for you while people get the questions in. Got a call from my agent the other day. Right in the middle of me doing like... I was in a meeting. I was doing a voiceover after that, Um I was doing bullet, the Bulletproof Actor launch that entire week. I felt proper overwhelmed the last two weeks. I'm going to be completely honest with you. On the verge of overwhelm anyway. I very much know when I'm feeling overwhelmed. And it's generally my own fault because when we feel overwhelmed, guys, ultimately what we do is we we think of all the things we've got to do and we feel we've got to do them all now, which is never the case. And generally, when you look at what you've got to do, most of the time, the only deadlines are put on it by yourself. So you're putting deadlines on yourself and you're like, why am I getting so stressed out? It's like, you know, I don't have to do this by this point. At what point is someone going to die if I don't do this? If the answer is like soon, do it. If it's not, try not to get overwhelmed about it. But I was feeling a bit overwhelmed. My agent sent me uh, a text going, Ross, got your casting tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, what's this? And it came in, it was a commercial casting. Super grateful for commercial castings. But I was like, 
oh, you know what commercial castings are like. You know, you can be there a long time. They never seem to run to time. They're always over. Sometimes they can be a cattle market. I don't want to sound like a whinging actor because I'm grateful for any opportunity. I was super grateful to my agent, but I was like, oh, God, I've got so much to do tomorrow. Is this like, oh, should I go? Should I just say, oh, you know, it's just not the right time? I thought, you know what? Forget it. You've got to go, right? You've got it's an opportunity. Just, you know, don't say no to an opportunity. You know, there's potential decent money in it, and you never know, dear. Honestly, it cut long story short, went along, and I was fe- I knew I had so much to do afterwards and so much to do before that I had absolutely no time to dwell on that audition, what was gonna happen, anything. I just went in <laughs> and to the point where the cast director went, Ross, what is up with you? It's a good job I know you, because I was a bit manic. I had a coffee and I was like, right, come on, let's go. What is it? I just want to get this done and get out of it. I've got loads to do. Um, and she was like, it's good job I know you. We had a bit of a laugh. Um, anyway, ultimately, the story is I had no time to worry about it. I just went in, did my thing, didn't overthink it. You know, didn't, I don't want to say I wasn't bothered about it because I kind of, I gave it my best, but I wasn't bothered about the outcome. I'm just like, literally, I'm going to go in, give it my two minutes and I'm out. See you later. I've got to run. Did, got a call from my agent like the day after going, right, Ross, I want to pencil you for that. What are your, what are your costume sizes? <laughs> so again, this has happened before to me again. Like, it's not about not caring about the audition. It's about being present in the moment, doing your best, leaving and forgetting about it. And as long as you don't overthink it beforehand because you don't dwell on it and you don't autopsy it afterwards, you just go and do a good job and you're not like completely like sabotaging yourself before you go in. You just book parts, man, like just left, right and center when you're like, if I get this, my life, you know, is certainly, you know, not going to be any any massively better or worse for it. You know, I'm not going to die if I don't get it. Same happened to me recently, says George. It's funny, isn't it? Really is funny. When you stop going in reeking of desperation, this happened to me many, many years ago when this clicked and I was like, wow, something's kind of happening here. I'm going in and like, I'm not freaking out about what would happen if I don't get this job. I've got other things in my life. That was the point where I went, I've got other things in my life to focus on. I'm multidimensional. I'm creative outside of this. If I don't get this job, so what? I'll get another one. I'm going to stop worrying about it. Things are starting happening. Um, and that's quite difficult when you're like, I get, you know, people are like, I get one audition every three months and it means the world. Even in that case, still just, you know, Get some perspective, ultimately. Got to get some perspective, you know. And there's... Um, I don't watch the news. Purposely don't watch it. And I tell everybody on the Bulletproof Actor Programme to have a news blackout, but I couldn't help but hear what had happened in the States last week with that shooter at that school. And, like, any time I feel, like, overwhelmed or anything like that, I'm like, man, just remind yourself, 17 people went to school that day and just paid the ultimate price for what? Wanting to learn. Um, That's the stuff that really matters. Not whether you get a you know, a commercial job or a drama job or an award or a BAFTA or whatever. It doesn't matter. Perspective and gratitude. Um, Jenna says, so confused about uh, the tax thing. How long do you keep your records? I just uh, got told you only need to keep records for two years, but I thought it was always five. And sure, you said seven. Uh, but is that just for a limited company as opposed to self-employed? So with tax, Jenna, as far as I know, yeah, I've always been told that um, I've been told to keep seven years of accounts because if they do an investigation on you, they, they can go back seven years. Um, a lot of, th- it depends who you use as an accountant now, a lot of accountants, my old accountant used to do everything paper records. So I've actually got literally seven years of accounts down here. My new accountant who I signed with like this for this year, he does my uh, personal accounts on my company accounts. They do everything digitally. So they actually then hold records of everything. You've got to hold records of all your invoices and expenses. Um, you can scan them into the computer if you want. You can use something called OneTap, uh, which is a great um, platform for tracking your expenses. Um, you can use OneTap um, and you can do it all digitally, so it's paperless. But I all I like paper copies. I keep copies of everything. And I, I've got seven years. Dawn says she thinks it's seven years as well. Um, so uh, Sharon says, I'm sure it's seven years, Je- Jenna, as well. And for those who don't know what OneTap is, I've got a little discount code for you. I reached out to OneTap quite a while ago and was like, this sounds pretty good um, for actors keeping their expenses. And I said, look, I'll tell my actors about it, but what a deal for them. And they've given me a deal. Let me see what it is. Because you can go and check it out and you get a free version of it. But let me see if I've got this discount code here for you all. Uh, um, oh, I'm sure I have. Where is it? What is it? Oh, I've got it on here somewhere. Friends and this members, one tap have put together a 25% discount. So here you go. So just download the... So, right, here's the way to find it. 
I've not actually, it's not a discount code, it's a link actually. If you go to actonthis.tv and click on the top three little, the lines, the top three lines in the left-hand corner, it opens up the menu and you'll see a white search bar. Just type the number one and then T-A-P, one tap, but the number one. And it's, you're going to find an article. Halfway down the article is a link that you click on and you can claim 25% off a, a premium subscription to it, um, which is pretty good. I still think it only works out like 30 quid a year or something with that. But you save some money that way. Um, and that's a way to basically you take a photograph of all your expenses. So if you get a receipt at a restaurant, and you're like, I want to claim my expenses on this, take a picture of it. It will automatically file that for you. And it will. it's very clever. It reads the receipt and it actually can read on the receipt how much you spent. It can read tax and all that kind of stuff. If it can't do it automatically, the really clever thing is it gets to somebody, it sends it to someone manually in an office. They look at it for you and they fill it in for you. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? All you have to do is take a photograph of your receipt or your invoice, whatever it is, any kind of expense. Somebody, if it's not a computer, a human being will figure out the expenses on that for you and file it all for you. It's pretty good, Jenna. But yeah, keep. Um, I would keep... Well, just keep, you know, it depends when you've registered self-employed. If you register self-employed now, just keep your accounts moving forward until someone tells you to bin them. So it's weird because it says 22 months on the HMRC website. Maybe it's changed. I've always, I mean, it's been ages since I've looked into it, but I've always been told they can go back seven years. Um, maybe it has changed, honestly. It's, it's a simple phone call, Jenna. Get on HMRC's website, ring them up, and just say how long you know do I need to keep these accounts for, and then let us all know in the Facebook group. Just a, Tony says, crazy story. I did an Instagram live sharing, if you're breathing, you're winning. The next day I was downtown, a shoot, uh, shooting happened outside the building. Wow, the building I was in. I saw someone being wheeled off on a stretcher. It was sad, but a huge reminder that my problems aren't really problems. I'm grateful, and I keep seeing the same names and faces pop up in these videos. Keep it up, friends. You're doing great. It's awesome awareness, Tony. I wish, man, I wish to God your government would just get rid of freaking guns. I know it's like a massive part of, like, um, America, isn't it? You know, the right to bear arms. But the reason, like, America's had, like, what, 30 shootings or something since since January, and we haven't had any, and, like, most of Europe probably hasn't had any. I don't think it's mental health, man. I think it's the fact that everyone's walking around with access to guns. Crazy, isn't it? We need to stop that. We just need to stop it. But, it's not for not for us to stop, is it? It's uh, Tony. If you can do something about it, man. If you can vote, freaking vote, vote for us. Because in the UK, we are we are helpless on that. Uh, by the way, did you do a chat with Michael Hyatt about goal setting yet? No, didn't um, do anything with um, with Michael Gary. Um, to be honest with you, I'm going to do a um, for anyone who bought five days the best year ever. I'm going to do a bonus webinar um, pretty soon. Actually, I just didn't want to do it when people had first set their goals because generally they're motivated. I wanted to do it like a quarter into the year to try and get people back on track if they've lost motivation. Very interesting chat I had with Michael. Michael basically, um, I was pretty. Oh, I don't want to. I was disappointed with him. With him, Gary. I created an ebook that was completely free based on a piece of training that he gave out three years ago. And it was completely free. I gave this ebook out completely free with no agenda. He saw the ebook and I got this message off him. A guy who I've supported for five years, selling his programs, promoting it to everybody I know, really believed in him. And rather than going, hey, Ross, um, really appreciate you know, the, uh, the shout out you gave me in that book and using my training. But mate, I came up with that training and like, you know, really would, would appreciate if you didn't kind of use it because it's my training. I didn't know it was like proprietary property of Michael's. He didn't do that. He just steamed right in. Like, and this is a guy who's, you know, who knows who I am and I've supported. And he steamed right in on a direct message on Twitter and he was like um, quoting things like international copyright infringement and went really, really mental at me. And I just thought, man, like, I don't really want to promote your stuff anymore because you're the guy who's supposed to be teaching everybody about an abundance mindset and you're telling how people have to live their lives and this is how you live happy and all this kind of stuff. And you've just done a seven-figure launch where you've earned millions of dollars that I've supported you in. And this little guy in Manchester in the UK who's got 5,000 followers on Twitter puts out a free ebook based on a bit of training you did three years ago. And you go mental at him. And I'm like, where's the abundance mentality, Michael? Where's this whole, you know, all oh, we can all have success kind of thing? I'm like... You're kind of bullshitting yourself if you're putting this out there to the world and then like you're not practicing it. And that's why I do my vlog to show you guys that I've completely practiced what I preach. So I'm not slating him. I think his work's great. It's really helped me massively over the years, but I was just very disappointed in the way that he behaved. So um, yeah, I'm probably not gonna, <laughs> gonna do a webinar with him, to be honest, Gary. I will do one myself with you guys for people who bought the program. But yeah, I was just a little bit like, man, 
it's like when you meet your hero sometimes, isn't it? And you get disappointed. I'm sure there's people on here who have met actors that they've been like seriously like fans of, and then you meet them and you go, oh, I'm kind of sorry I kind of met you now. Um, I felt a bit like that, mate. So um, I don't know. Maybe you redeem yourself, but I just, yeah, I just thought, oh, it's not very, very nice. Um, drama, says Alex. It wasn't really drama. It was about three direct messages, and I changed the ebook. Um, ironically, I had to change the ebook to something that he now uses. So it was an acronym he'd come up with three years ago um, called Action, rather than using the SMART acronym. He used it for one year and then went back to using the SMART acronym for goal setting, you know, specific, measurable, actionable, etc. So he made me take the ebook down on Action, which he doesn't use anymore. And then I rewrote it as the SMART acronym that he actually uses today, but isn't his. It's been used since 1972 to set goals. So um, it's really interesting, yeah, that I, the ebook actually ended up being more like his current training than the stuff that he used to do. Bit mental, but like I say, each to their own, man. Eric's here again. Just joined Perfly or Perfy, whatever he says. See how we go. Nice one, Eric. Um, that's, uh, that's cool, man. Let us know uh, what it's like. Uh, Tony says we're on the same page about that. Um, about what? What are you on the same page about? Yeah, Tony. Just people just not practicing what they preach, is that? Because, yeah, honestly, I think that kind of happens a lot. Um, there's definitely a few people in the personal development world that I just feel are super genuine. There's a few people I just feel aren't, and I feel they're just saying stuff and putting out courses to earn money out of people. People like Lewis Howes, man, he's just super genuine. Like, awesome guy. Um, I'm part of like a mastermind group that he runs and I've seen nothing but nothing but genuine and authenticity uh, from, from people like Lewis. But yeah, other people, I don't know. There's going to be a few out there, isn't there? There isn't every, uh, every walk of life. There's enough actors out there setting up acting schools and stuff, promising actors success that they've never had. I see that quite a lot. doesn't sit well with me. Um, awesome. Right, we've got five minutes, guys. Um, anyone got any, any more for any more? Now we've, now we've got over the drama. Um, let us know uh, if anyone's got any questions about anything anything at all Facebook, social media um, marketing voiceover, podcasting vlogging videography, I don't know, anything you see me doing that might be able to help you with websites anyone, you know, any interest in setting up a website or setting up a community about something, on Wednesday night when we do the book club we're going to be looking at Gary Vaynerchuk's crushing it, here's a guy who's freaking genuine, super genuine you know he don't, he's not going to give a shit if you put an ebook out about something that he's done because he's he, the guy's crushing it. Literally, the, the name of his book is crushing it, and he's earning a shed load of money out of practicing what he preaches, which is how it should be. Top bloke, we're going to be looking. Um, we're going to be looking at that book on Wednesday and looking at how actors and just anybody can create side hustles, online businesses, effectively that are going to help support them. Um, and get them out of those shitty nine till fives that a lot of actors, you know, have to uh, have to do um, or think they have to do in order to support themselves. Uh, what was that, George? Did you say something then about how can you, without a show reel, how can you get through the door with theatre directors? Was that? Um, there's only really a couple of things you can do, and it all revolves around taking massive action, mate. So if you don't have a show reel, and that's not always that that useful to a theatre director anyway. The the best way to get in front of theatre directors, mate, is to put on some theatre. <laughs> I know it sounds basic, um, but that's just it. Don't wait to be cast in somebody else's show. Would be my advice for everybody. If you're not working, write your own thing. Put your own thing on. Take it to the Edinburgh Fringe or any other fringe theatre things or, or, or theatre festivals you can go to um, and invite casting directors to come and see it. Um, it's hugely beneficial and I know a lot of TV casting directors who are real avid theatre goers um, and they cast a lot of people in their TV programmes because they've seen them in the theatre I should probably do some more theatre at some stage don't do a lot of theatre, theatre for me at drama school was not that pleasurable because of my eye condition so the reason that I have probably allowed I don't know, my subconscious to put me off theatre is because it comes with a bit of farce and a bit of, you know, a bit of trouble for me I can't see in the dark because of my eye condition. Uh, right now it's pigmentosa. I'm night blind. So when the lights go out in the theatre and everyone else is like moving furniture around and doing scene changes. <laughs> George, man, I'm just struggling to get off stage. Like, I'm just like, shit, where am I? How far off the stage am I? And um, I struggle. I struggle with it. So it became not very much fun for me. Um, George says, you fancy doing something together? Right now, man, still probably not for me, to be honest with you. I'm more about film and TV and documentaries um 
theatre, I would love to do some theatre at some point, you know, at some point down the line. I don't know when that's going to be. Maybe when I'm a bit more established um, so I can put on something that I want to put on um, in a big theatre, which would be lovely as opposed to, uh, you know, again, being in someone else's thing. Um, but yeah, it was never, it was just, it became a bit of a chore for me, to be honest, theatre. I loved the performance and the live feeling of it all. But I was like, I get more of a buzz out of TV and and cre just creating my own stuff. That's why I went, right, I'm going to, no one's going to give me a chat show. I'm going to create ads on this TV and create my own chat show. No one's going to give me a reality show. I'm going to create my own with a vlog. You know, no one's going to give me a documentary. Let's start creating a documentary. Now it happens that actually through doing that myself, it looks like maybe the BBC will give me a documentary. Um, but yeah, create your own stuff. I would quit waiting to be in other people's shit. Otherwise you're just throwing time away. Um, you know, I've told everybody countless times about Rachel Shenton, who was like, I'm not earning earning any money and I'm not working really in the UK anymore after leaving Hollyoaks. Going to write a film. Never written a film. No one really believes in me as, as a writer or anything like that. I'm going to do it anyway. And now she's going to the Oscars on Tuesday. She's been nominated for an Oscar. So don't wait, man. Create your uh, your own stuff, definitely. Um, Ali says, in the process of organizing a web series with a lot of the acts on this group. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Honestly, do it. Just do it. What do you have to lose? The time is going to pass anyway. So you might as well do something that you enjoy doing rather than waiting for someone else to give you a job. Um, Tony says, come to Chicago and do theatre with us, friends. It's why I love the city so much. Chicago, man. We should do Chicago in Chicago. <laughs> we'll put that on, Tony. We'll all have a, uh, we'll have a good time. Awesome, guys. Listen, it's nearly 10 o'clock. Um, so thank you for being here. I enjoy these sessions a lot because I hope it offers people value. You get something out of it. You learn something. And it might inspire you, like I say, to go out and do your own thing. Maybe you'll start shooting a vlog. Maybe you'll start a podcast. You know, you'll put on that theatre show, George, um, or someone like that. I just want people to realize that, yeah, if you, you know, ultimately, like we said at the start of this, if you're going to live till 75, which I hope everyone here does plus, right? But even at 75, you've got 27,800 like, days or something like that to live. Um, use them wisely, man. Even if you're 65 on air, according to that, 75, what would you have? You'd have like 300 and, what, 3,000, nearly 4,000 days left to live. That's a lot of days, man. Um, but you, everyone here is going to live way over 60, uh, 75, you know, so, uh, so yeah, you know, plenty of, uh, plenty of time. Um, thank you, Richard. He says, thanks, Ross. Have a great week. Amy Allen's just joined us. Amy, right at the end of the broadcast. You have to go watch and watch the uh, go back and watch the replay, but you will be able to do that literally the minute I uh, I end this. A uh, massive shout out as well to everybody on the audio experience. I massively appreciate like everyone coming here to watch. Anyone watching on the YouTube like replay, please leave me a comment. I want to know if you're watching um, and if you're listening on the audio experience. Like I say every time in the intro, and um, please leave me a like a tweet. Drop me a tweet at Ross A Grant. I just want to know what people are getting out of these. If you've got any comments about future topics. Um, you'd want us to cover on a Monday. Monday is basically motivation and mind hacks. Everything that, you know, positive psychology wise and success wise, it's going to help you have more success in everything, not just your acting career. And then Wednesday nights, we do obviously the book club. You've got an idea for a book. Drop us a uh, drop us a tweet as well. But I hope this has been useful. Thank you, Helen, saying good night. Thank you, uh, Lucy. Thank you, Carly. Uh, thank you, everybody on Facebook who has watched. Um, and I'm going to be back, like I say, Wednesday. Oh, no, it's not going to be book club on Wednesday, is it? I'm an idiot. It's going to be um, show reel share day. So we're not going to be looking at Gary's book on Wednesday because we're doing 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. UK time, show real share day. I can't go on and do a book club after that. Four hours of live broadcasting is enough, and I'm going to do some work with Chris away from the office after that. So I won't be able to do book club on Wednesday. <laughs> Apologies about that. Business will resume as normal the following Wednesday. So the next time I see you guys live will be Wednesday, 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. for show real share day. Please tweet at Act on this TV and at Chris Stone Films your show reel on YouTube and Twitter, uh, YouTube and Vimeo. Uh, YouTube or Vimeo, now tweet us a link to that. We'll download it and hopefully we'll play that out to almost, what, 70, I don't know, 72, 73,000 subscribers. Plenty of people. Hopefully we'll get eyeballs uh, on your work and your performance. Until Wednesday then, I'll see you soon, guys. Thank you so much. Bye for now.